Hi guys and welcome to my review of the QE Ears Quartet. This is a QE Ears latest product. This time they are offering us what they believe or what they feel a hybrid uh, earphone should or could possibly be be like in terms of its configuration. And by that I mean what it's using a dual uh, dual DD and two BAs as well. With regards to the dual DD, I cannot confirm whether or not it's what they mention as a super barrier driver, which um, I don't exactly understand what they mean by that, but there's a lot of uh, dual uh, the implementation. Of, there's been a lot of implementations of dual drivers now lately. Um, the first ones were obviously different size drivers, ten and six millimeter, or ten and seven. But uh, now lately, with the Blessing Three, with the um, uh, Penon 10th anniversary, with up and coming uh, our Audio Aurora, there are actually two drivers, either of six millimeters or ten millimeters or eight millimeters, whatever the size is, uh, and they are handling the uh, lower frequencies. Uh, QE Ears just states that it's uh, dual ten millimeter diaphragms of uh, or in titanium diaphragms to be more precise, with with their own independent magnet systems. Um, so I, I cannot ascertain if there is just a single driver with both drivers are just stacked one on top of the other and we've seen that many times in the past uh, Duno had the, 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 the DM480 if I'm mistaken that, that was a, a driver of that configuration uh, 8 millimeters, um, and I kind of have the, the feeling that that's what they're using here it, uh, because there's absolutely no, diag no, you know, no, no diagrams, no pictures, nothing um, and you know, like I said, short of actually opening up the, 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 the quartet I cannot confirm uh, if this is a setup like the Blessing 3 or a setup like the DM480 from Duno. Okay, anyway, that's just a little side note. With regards to the box, the usual QE ear stuff, sleeve, open it up, open that up, the IEMs came over there as you can see, very easy. Underneath that came the case, which is a little bit on the small size. I mean, a little bit on the small size, but then again, this is $109, so I guess you could say that's okay. Inside, uh, ample supply of tips, three different types of tips, white, black, and these black and red ones, and then the cable. The cable, uh, the cable could be better. Let's put it that way. The cable could be better. Uh, I've seen better cables at the same price, so I guess uh, QE Ears could have done a little bit better in that aspect. But anyway, that's just a little another. That's just another little side note. Okay, so let's just get the box out of the way here. And show the IMs and talk about what we want to talk, which is sound. Okay, these are the the IMs. Beautiful purple uh, shell resin with uh, this kind of nuance of the uh, uh, I don't know if it's been painted or if it's of the resin or when they mix it. I don't know what it is, but it looks the part. I'm using an IVPIQ cable, which has that purple as well there with the with the gold and silver and it, and it just looks it looks very nice it just this this just matches up very nicely this is something that i think wouldn't have been a bad idea if they actually had given us a cable maybe of not of this quality or of this thickness but they could have given us a cable maybe of this aesthetic look it would have been a nice compliment to the im because it is actually qe years in that aspect they make some really beautiful ims be it the cadenza or be it the um uh, the orchestra light or even the original orchestra uh, they all are very very beautiful items anyway resin shell as i was saying i'm using the kb07 uh, medium sized tips they fit flawlessly in my ears the im is a little bit on the big side but it's fine it, it, it fits there once the you know the tips are chosen it fits in nicely doesn't really bug me stays in the weight is decent not not hit not too heavy uh, it's it's fine and then it's got also those tuning switches there which has become now all the rage as you can see oops sorry there's the tuning switches, okay. Tuning switches provide four setups. I'm using the zero one setup, and I'll, I'll get there in a second, which is the setup that I just found was the most, uh, that made the most sense for me. Uh, and that's it. So physically, they fit fine. They isolate pretty decently. Uh, tip selection, we already know, is uh, of, of the utmost importance. Uh, and that's it, the cable. I'm using this cable not only because of its aesthetic looks, but also because it fulfills those basic parameters that I look for always when I'm looking for a cable or I'm choosing a cable. So that's that. That's the, the, the physical aspect or attributes of the quartet out of the way. Um, what do I have there in front of us? Well, in front of us, 
first of all, on the right hand side, I've got the DaVinci Electronics Zone about the 2B with the company Warp Core and the Prime Deck. And all I will say is this is an amazing little setup. Amazing. Uh, I've got the topping A50S, I've got a DX3 Pro. Uh, I've, got, I've got some nice stuff. I've got stuff which is more than adequate. Uh, you guys know that I like using a lot my NX7 with the, the Q-Style N15. Uh, so I, I can comfortably say that I've got equipment which is of high quality and it is more than capable of extracting very good performance out of all the IEMs that I test. And what I can say, or, you know, after being uh, playing around with this baby now for a week is very very serious piece of equipment that's all it might not look the fa the part or fancy and so on and so forth but it does what it's supposed to do flawlessly which is perform absolutely amazing uh, you know you put it on there's no noise nothing it's amazing that's all i'm going to say so seriously have a look into it you know check it out if you guys are in the look for or in the in the in the lookout for a, a possible setup with regards to an amp deck and so on, have a look at it. You, I think you will not be uh, disappointed. As for the IEMs, I've got here the TRN TA3. Uh, that's priced at around fifty-five dollars. I've got the uh, CVJ May priced at about sixty dollars. I've got the Letrure D13, one hundred nine dollars, the same price as the QE ears, and I've got the Wizard HE10, uh, around seventy dollars, a single dynamic. So single dynamic, single dynamic. One plus two with switches. Uh, two DDs plus one BA, so it's a ten, a six, and a single DD, a single BA. Sorry, and this has got those two DDs, which I'm not really sure how they are. If they are coaxial, or if they are a true physical two separate DDs. Uh, if anyone does know, please let me let me let me know. I would appreciate that. And two BAs. Uh, I know is that the BA is also custom what models are being used or not I'm not sure anyway that's my setup here this is what I uh, you know used to compare I compared it with a few more IEMs but I basically just left it to, to this as I stated there's a uh, tuning switches on the quartet um, and they provide four options of, of, of tuning um, on the zero zero setting uh, you could say uh, it's a warmish dark signature, okay, uh, which uh, continues being warmish dark, maybe a little bit even darker if you put the first switch up and leave the the second switch down, so one zero. Um, if you then put both switches up, so one one, um, there's a there's a, a, a balancing out of the whole frequency range and it kind of becomes like a V shaped. Uh, it's it's a nice setup that way. I, I actually listened to, uh, quite a bit to that setup, the one one setup. But ultimately, then I uh, opted for the zero one setup. So the first switch uh, down and the and the the second switch in the up position, which is the one that actually provided the most clarity. So the balance between the bass and then the mids and the highs was pending to more towards the mids and highs showing themselves more. The bass never is affected by the, 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 the switches. It's just the, the the mids and the highs and how the whole energy level of everything just comes, you know, comes to, comes forward or comes out. Uh, so for the majority of the of the listening testing, in, in my opinion, of of the of the quartet is based on the zero one setup. Okay. Um, how can I now break down the sound of the quartet? It is um, definitely bass emphasized. Okay, it's it's got a very prominent bass and sub and, and, um, and sub bass and mid bass. Um, uh, it bleeds into the mids. Okay, uh, but it does it in a in a in an acceptable manner. Um, it's for me right on the borderline. And if sometimes uh, it doesn't bug me, or if if the majority of the times it doesn't bug me. Uh, sometimes that excessive weight that it is conferred, that has been conferred into the mid bass, does mess uh, things up but just a little bit. I mean, a song like "Elephant" from Carol Dubok, it just sounds uh, overly thick. Okay, it sounds muddy. Uh, a song as well like uh, "The City" from from um, from John Mark, the same situation. It, it just sounds. Uh, 
overly thick, overly, uh, overly muddy, and, and it, 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 it's, 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 it's a pity. That's all. I mean, but that's just my personal taste with what I listen to. So, I mean, don't, don't, uh, don't, um, don't be too. Um, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, in terms of the mids, uh, in the setups or in the switch positions where the mids are being purposely subdued, having all that bass coming from behind, it just darkens everything up. Yes, they're not fatiguing. Yes, they, there's no bleed. Yes, and uh, no bleed. Sorry, there's no there's no sibilance. There's no aggressiveness. But it just darkens everything up, and it just makes for uh, a very, a very, it's 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 just dull sounding. Okay, it's not that it's bad, but it's just dull. It lacks a little bit of life. It lacks a little bit of of sparkle. Okay, uh, and the same thing happens with the with the highs. Actually, the highs uh, in the in the settings which do not have the second switch up. So if it's not the zero one setting or the one one setting, you actually notice that the highs are perhaps uh, a little bit excessively grainy a little bit excessively unpolished and when you actually give that extra energy to the highs it cleans up everything nicely and they actually are performing in my opinion better so i prefer to have uh the the the, the highs emphasized because they just balance out everything with the rest of the frequency range as opposed to having them uh, subdued or, or or less prominent okay um technically um I I found the, the the quartet to be just just overly closed down. Um, it's not that it's bad. Again, let me let me just you know I I, I don't want to sound like I'm I'm beating on the quartet now in a negative manner. It's not that it's bad, but at this price point, well, at any price point, you have expectations. You have you have things that you expect to 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 perform in a specific manner that, the, that you will you know you will get. Um, um, a certain amount of 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 of, of, uh, of performance in certain aspects, and you know, in terms of of uh, uh, the, the 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 technical part of things, uh, I found that uh, you know, the imaging is a little bit dull in in its accuracy because of that excessive bass that you have from behind. the The sound stage um, again. It's a little bit closed in. There's not that big sense of space that, for example, you get from the HE, uh, the Wizard, the HE10. Um, with regards to tone and to, uh, to, to timbre and the tonality, it's fine uh, for the most part. Although, again, that excessive mid bass emphasis sometimes does kind of uh, excessively confer warmth to certain. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, instruments that it, it, it spoils them. Um, it, uh, this is me. With regards to that, I'm actually be nitpicking a little bit because it has to do with what I like listening to. Okay, um, in terms of of its uh, resolution and and speed and detailed retrieval and so on and so forth, um, uh, I don't find well the, the resolution is, I guess, acceptable. Okay. Um, Depending obviously on what song you'll be listening, it will shine more or less, but it's acceptable. Um, the speed of the driver in terms of, of the of the bass, it can, it, it sometimes it's a little bit slow. I just honestly, I don't actually think it's a bad driver. I just think it's that uh, overemphasis that they've given to the mid bass makes it sound a little bit slow and sounds slightly muddy sometimes. Um, and then obviously, you know, the detailed retrieval will suffer from this. That's why in the zero one position, the detailed retrieval is, you know, it's, it's fine, it's good, it's, it's adequate for the price and for what's on offer. But on the other settings, the, the, the detailed retrieval just, uh, just, uh, it's not that it's, non, it's not ex non existent, but it's, it's just uh, not the detailed retrieval that you would expect from an IMO at this price point. So s imaging, sound stage, and detailed retrieval uh, are, you know, the timbre and the tonality, I think, is still the one that comes out more on top, as well as the resolution out of the technical aspects. Uh, in terms of the frequency, uh, if you are using the zero one setting, like I said, then fine. The mids are fine. The vocals, the females and male vocals are nice. Um, they've got the, the right amount of energy, the right amount of tonality. They don't confer any huskiness, which is not there re in reality. Uh, you know, it's it's fine. It's fine. It's just that uh, that excess mid-bass energy that you have that 
is the culprit to sometimes things not sounding the way they should. Uh, even with with uh, you know, if like for example, let, let me let me give you an example of a song that um, uh, you will uh, you from Cecile Norby. You know, it's basically just her voice, and uh, that mid bass is there in a way that just I don't know. It it just takes away a little bit of that sparkle of her voice, you know. Um, it it no, um, it, it's not bad, but it's it could be slightly more more. It could have been slightly more well executed, and. Mind you, keep in mind, I'm saying this because we are coming from the cadenza and from the orchestra light, which uh, are both, in my opinion, of excellent items. Excellent. Uh, fine. Uh, maybe a few years did this tuning style here on purpose, wanted to do this tuning style here on purpose. And if that is the case, then okay, fine. But that doesn't mean that you know we have to always like 100% everything that they've done. Uh, in a look, in a sentimental mood from Cecil Norby, uh, another one where uh, where you notice uh, that that mid bass energy that's there is just taking away from her voice. Uh, it's 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 adding stuff that it shouldn't be adding. You know, that's that's the only thing. Um, compared then to what I have here, well. Uh, it's not a question of um, this being bad sounding or not being capable of, of you know, satisfying what uh, people might like or what people might not like in terms of, of, of sound and so on and so forth. There are tastes for everything. But when I start comparing the, 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 the quartet with these IMs, uh, yes, certain aspects of its, of, of its shine positively, but in my opinion, there are more aspects in of its negative, which are negative towards it, that shine or that come up. When I compare it with the HE10, it's straight away obvious that that's a much more balanced IEM. Mids, highs, everything there. There's there's way more detailed retrieval. Technically, it's a, a superior IEM to the quartet. End of story. That's the reality. It's got more treble extension, better quality treble, better mids. Um, Everything's just been, uh, you know, the way that they've been able to tune that single uh, dynamic driver there is, is top notch. The only place where it loses to the quartet is in the bass, uh, but it loses in the bass in a relative manner because the bass there is adequate for the rest of the frequency range and it's well matched and it's it's got plenty of of of, of slam and 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 low frequency rumble to complement the rest nicely. Uh, there's no mud, there's no bleed. So it's it's kind of a, a, a tough one to say which is the better bass, more quantity. Yeah, definitely, but that there by no means does it fall behind in terms of quality. In terms of quality, it's a better bass than the quartet, in my opinion. Okay, so the the, Q, the, the Wizard, the HE10, overall, I, I, I will dare say that it's a better IM than the quartet. From what I understand, the way that they've done the tuning here of the, 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 the dynamic drivers, they've got one dynamic driver working up to 350 hertz, the other one then works from 350 roughly, uh, or goes until at one kilohertz. So one stops at 350, the other one goes up to one kilohertz, and then you have the, 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 the BAs handling the mids and the highs. Uh, you would expect by having that kind of breakdown that it, it should be more competent. That's, that's what ultimately I'm trying to say. With regards to the H or to the D thirteen from Let Sure, uh, in terms of pure bass again, that is a better execution, better slam, no bleed, uh, quicker, better texture. Uh, uh, bass there is superior to the bass on on the quartet. Okay, midwise the mids here, especially in the zero one positioning, are superior to the to the D thirteen. And there's also a, a little bit more extension here, uh, or perceived extension up top than on the D13. So, uh, in this case, uh, if 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 in this particular case here with the HE10 and the quartet, uh, if you were kind of uh, thinking which one to go for, and you want a, a good overall IEM uh, for, you know, I would definitely tell you go for the HE10. In this particular case. 
uh, I would probably stick with the quartet. I think the quartet is a superior IEM to the D13. Not by much, but it is a superior IEM to the D13. Okay, Even with its flaw of the mid bass being excessive, in my opinion, it's better than the D13. Then that leaves us here with the CVJ May and the TA3 from TRN. Uh, the TA3 from TRN, when I reviewed it, um, I was perhaps just a little bit uh, hard on it uh, because it was three IMs that I tested from them, the Rose Finch, the TA3, and the MT4. And, uh, you know, the Rose Finch was an absolute disappointment in terms of a planar because, you know, having had such a nice planar from, 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 for their first try, which was the Kirin, uh, okay, fine. It might not have been as good as the S12 and 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 the, and the Timeless and other other planers that were already available, the P1 Max and so on and so forth. But it was a nice planer, and uh, when the Rose Finch they came back, so you know they stepped back. So that was a disappointment. The MT4 was plagued with a whole bunch of you know quality control issues with glue in the canal that connected the two drivers and the second driver not working properly and that, that was a nightmare but ultimately when you found one that was working it actually sounded good and the ta3 here is to a certain extent based on the mt4 it's basically using the same drivers they've just added the ba and the addition of the ba is where i have my head my my biggest pet peeve with this because instead of adding the ba and the ba being added in a manner which it's not aggressive or not excessive and it just adds the right amount of sparkle and finishes up everything nicely it just it's it's too much it it, it it's it's okay and after you know uh, some uh, letting it play for a long long time and playing around with tips and, and seeing how i could i know how i can do it i know how, i know very well how i can tame it but i wanted to see if there was any way for the majority of us to be able to improve it without having to start tinkering significantly with IM. And ultimately, you know, uh, uh, just good old fashioned, let it play, let it burn in for a while. And the, the, the KB year 07s, uh, or then the BGVP white bores, are the tips that will work, in my opinion, the best with the TA3. And all of this talk here to say what? The TA3 sounds very similar to the quartet. However crazy that might sound, it sounds very similar. Um, there are instances where I prefer the bass on the TA3 as compared to the bass of the quartet. Why? Because there's not as much bleed, there's not as much mid-bass excessiveness, and so it sounds like an overall more, more balanced out bass. Where it loses out to the quartet is only that area there between two and four K where it's got a dip where this kind of maintains that energy level across that area. So that dip kind of um, shuts down, you know, a little bit female voices. Uh, and so if you are a, a, a vocal, uh, a vocal um, freak, not freak in a good way, a vocal fan, let's put it that way, I don't want to offend anybody, then uh, you will be, ah, okay. Um, and it's precisely that dip there that coupled with then that, treble which was excessive from the BA which made itself very 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 evident you know you could see okay this is a BA there that's there um, it just it kind of uh, it, it made the, the TA sound weird at times but in the midst of all that weirdness the reality is this I was actually quite surprised how I am of half the price of the quartet was actually able to keep up the quartet a lot more times than what I was expecting and be it not then for that dip that it has in the in the in the mids and and it's just from the mids to the upper mids, I would actually dare say that the, the TA3 would be a more sensible option. Honestly, I really would. I know that's a really bold statement that I'm saying right now, but I actually would. Um, ultimately, it's not just because of the fact that the tuning switches here uh, and that lack of that dip there uh, are enough of a reason to. To say, okay, no, the, the 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 quartet makes sense. It's it justifies being twice the price. So choose that over over the the TA3. I will give the TA3 one thing, which is with regards to the stock cable that it brings, it puts the stock cable of the of the quartet to shame. The stock cable that the TA3 brings is very nice. Okay, so we have one that, in my opinion, is a better buy than the quartet. One that. No, it's not a better buy. Another one which is 
not a better buyer, but does a hell of a job and actually does does more, uh, keeps up better with the quartet than does the D13, okay? And then that finally leaves us here with the CVJ May. And the CVJ May, to cut a long story short, is a better IEM than the quartet. That's it. It's got the switches, so the argument of the switches here is not valid. It's got the switches, the switches work, and they work really well, okay? Excellent build quality, all in metal, excellent build quality. Uh, cost $60, so basically half of the price. So it beats the quartet in matching it with regards to its versatility and tuning. Uh, equals, well, equals the quartet, beats the quartet in terms of the price equals or beats the quartet in terms of build quality and then in terms of sound it is a better sounding IEM than the quartet there's no bleed of the bass in such a significant manner as there is in the quartet so the sound is way more balanced the mids uh, the, the overall sound that you get here from the May is a very kind of old school sound yes it's an old school sound very correct in terms of timbre very correct in terms of its tonality um, very musical, great technicalities comparative comparative to the to the to the, uh, to the quartet. Better sense of space in terms of uh, uh, soundstage. I mean, you listen to the the two songs that I mentioned, "The City" from John Mark and "An Elephant" from Carol Dubok. You listen to just those two songs alone are enough for you to see that the May is a better sounding IEM than the quartet. So yeah, we have a second IEM here, which is a better option in my view, in my view, in my books, is a better option than the QES Quartet. Uh, and that's it, guys. That's basically it. I'll show you another graphs quickly so you just can have a, a final look and, and see what I, I was talking about here in all of this, uh, in all of this um, review and, and opinion giving. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice IEM, the quartet. It is a nice IEM. I'm not, I, can't, I cannot deny that it isn't a nice IEM. It's, it's got its, its good points going for it, you know, especially the bass, if that is your thing, if what you're looking for is, uh, is bass. And yes, fine. It's got the tuning switches as well, which you know, are versatile and give you the options of the tuning. And again, fine. But the truth is this. You have the CVJ May. It's also got the tuning switches. It's got amazing bass. The bass in, by no means is be lacking behind lagging behind the base of the of the uh, quartet uh, and, it, and it just sounds more polished honestly I mean uh, uh, you know, like I said this is uh, I don't want to uh, sound like I'm I'm being mean yet to QE years no they've they've given us tremendous products up to now out of the products that they've given this one is perhaps the one that's the least impressive in my books the cadenza was amazing. The orchestra light was amazing. The orchestra, the original, actually the first the orchestra, was a good, a good IEM. Although the price point uh, made it enter a, a market where there was a lot of competition, but then the cadenza at thirty-five dollars was and is a fantastic IEM still. The orchestra light uh, at the two hundred and forty dollar mark for an all BA set again perfect, amazing, nothing to be said. This. Uh, had big shoes to fill because it had to kind of at least match up those two in terms of the overall performance or those three in terms of overall performance and what is on offer and I feel that mm, it, it, it could have been slightly slightly better tuned that's that's my opinion anyway guys that's it I'll show you another graphs and we'll wrap it up thank you hi guys and uh, welcome now to the graph section I'm just going to first show you the graph just of the quartet and then we take it. Uh, we take it from there. Okay. So the first graph here that I'm going to be showing you is the graph with the zero zero setup. Uh, this little squiggly here doesn't really exist. It's just the uh, you know making sure that it stays put there in the coupler. Um, the IEM is a little bit of a of a hassle sometimes. So that's what happens. As you can see, then as I was mentioning, this there's a a lot of bleed here into the lower mids and that just uh, I can understand this this is a, what we usually see for example in the likes of the variations and and the likes of the blessing three this this um, more the variations actually um, so that that you know drop off of the base very early on but they've extended that drop off uh, and that cutoff only happens at around 400 hertz where it's entered uh, significant into the lower mid, so there's bleed in there, okay? Uh, this in the zero zero setting, 
um, very progressive the way that the pin again is done it then plateaus nicely there's a peak here which is capillary related and non capillary related and an extension past 10k although um, when you hear it you don't notice this as much as you would think mostly because or in principle because of the, all of this energy that comes from behind okay um, this is then the one one setting which I'm going to put now and I've, I've normalized the graph at 500 Hertz so you can see that basically the base has remained the same they've just made it darker okay um, that's that's all it's, it's, it's just a darker sounding uh, sound uh, because of the energy level having come having dropped um, the next one that I'm going to show you is the one zero setting okay this is the one zero setting uh, let me actually just take one of them out so you can compare the one zero setting uh, is very similar to actually to the one one setting let me just put those two together so you can see uh, it's just that one is darker than the other uh, the one zero being slightly darker because um, in the, in in the one zero they've cut away a little bit of energy here uh, between one and, and 3k so both of them are very similar just one is darker than the other okay the one one uh, is not as dark there's a little bit more upper mid, the more mids and upper mids and, and so it doesn't sound as dark but both of these two setups are the dark the dark sounding setups let's put it that way uh, and when compared with the zero zero you can see that uh, although similar the, the difference isn't that significant they all are more on the darkest sounding okay which then finally leaves us with the um, zero one setup which is by far the one that's got the most clarity the one that's the most alive uh, and I'll show each one of them comparatively so first of all if you actually look it will be the it's the only one that actually the, the base and the mids are on the same level okay when you then compare it with the uh, one zero setup, it, it's it's quite evident here the difference in energy. All right, so uh, one is dark and, and one is very dark, very thick sounding. The other one is got way more uh, a fun factor associated with being alive and detailed and so on. Uh, with the other one, the the one one again the same situation, but to a lesser extent. And then the one that is. The, uh, less of a noticeable difference is with the zero zero, which is the, the stock setting that it comes up. But still, the zero one is the more detailed uh, out of all them. Okay, so that's the quartet there out of the way. Now, let's then just take away all these quickly. Take that away, take that away, take that away. Let's start now showing the other IEMs that we want. Okay, uh, wizard. Wizard, wizard, there we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to find them here. Where did I put this? Is it I have? Yeah, I think it's yes. Here we go. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, this first one here is the uh, quartet in the zero one setup, which is the one that I, I listened to. The next one that I'm going to be putting up now is the TA3. Okay, that's the TA3. Uh, and as you can see, it, the TA3 doesn't have all that mid base there, so it cleans up nicely the mids. And were it not for that dip that I mentioned between 2 and 4K there, uh, because the dip there at 5, it's actually helping out with you know no, no sibilance and so on and so forth, it, it would, in my opinion, the TA3 would be a more sensible choice it's got that extension there it's noticeable but it's just this this amount of energy here that is it can be a little bit too much and this is already now using the tip that I mentioned the 07 tip because in stock format it was another 2 or 3 dB still on top of that so it was still more prominent the difference okay so that's with the TVJ, uh, sorry, with the TRA, the, the, the TA3. With uh, 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 the CVJ, this is the graph here of the CVJ, okay? The CVJ, as you can see, there, there, there's a lot of similarities between the CVJ and the, and the, and the TRA, uh, the TRN, the, the TA. Let me actually just change the color here of the TRN so you can see what I'm talking about, okay? 
Okay, the blue is the CVJ May and the red is the, 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 the TA3. There's a lot of similarities. The base is the same, basically, uh, the, very similar. It's just that the overall balance in the May, in terms of the mids and, and, and to highs, has been better done, better executed. And that better execution shows itself, and, and you can hear it by the sound being more balanced out, more coherent. I mean, that, that's a nice looking curve there. It, it sounds really good. It's got the right dips in the right places, plenty of energy, plenty of detail. And when you compare it with the quartet, um, not having this mid bass there, you know, that what it loses there in terms of the mid bass, but the fact that also there, that dip is not as significant as you've seen before, it just, it just makes for an overall better sounding, more coherent sounding I am. It's just more balanced out. Um, I just, I just very much enjoy the sound of the May. Honestly, I think it's an IM that uh, goes very much under the radar. Maybe because it's a CVJ and people don't believe in CVJ, as, as because of you know some lackluster products that they've had. But the truth is, the CVJ is, in my opinion, in my books, with my music, a better sounding IM than the quartet. And this is the quartet, mind you, in the in the zero one setting. Because if I was to compare this with the other settings, like I showed you before, I mean, it 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 just there's no comparison, you know. The 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 the, the, the May just walks all over it with the other settings. Uh, this is the only setting where the quartet can even uh, trade blows with the May, in my opinion. Okay. And finally, the only one that's left here to show actually is where is it now? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is the HE10? I would like to show it to you as well if I can find it. Uh, Oh, here we go, 11, exactly. So let me just take that out, number 11, and just normalize it. There we go. Um, I think the, the, it's self-explanatory. Uh, the overall balance of everything in the in the wizard is, is just more sensible. I'm just going to put it in black so you can see that the difference, you know, the, the contrast a little bit better. Uh, a, a nice, a very nice bass, maybe not as thick sounding, but quality wise, very nice. Perfectly done mids, great extension. It just, it just sounds. The secret of the of the of the wizard of the HE10 is the execution of the bass, which has been done in a in a way more sensible way, and having been done in a way more sensible manner, it just lets the whole of the mids shine. And in the case of the of the quartet, the biggest problem is not really the mids. The mids all well done. That that those are nice mids there, but this excessive energy here, it just takes away from that um, uh, ability to have the detailed retrieval that is possible of having, um, in my opinion. And it takes away as well a little bit of that uh, sparkle and that that, that little. Uh, Cleanliness, the, the 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 twinklies and the sparklies, and the that you would like to hear on, on voices, especially female voices, uh, and that's it, guys. Hope uh, I wasn't too excessive in my in my view here of the quartet. Uh, any questions, as usual, please like and subscribe, and um, I'll do my best to answer as quickly as possible. Take care now. Bye bye.